Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about Mendel's Laws of Inheritance, which are the foundation of modern genetics, as well as the three classic genetic experiments you need to know for the MCAT. Let's start with Gregor. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk who lived in the 19th century and is considered the father of genetics. He conducted extensive experiments on pea plants and discovered the basic principles of inheritance that are now known as Mendel's Laws. We have the first law, the law of segregation. This law states that during the formation of gametes, the two alleles of a gene separate from each other so that each gamete only carries one allele, symbolized with this vertical line here. The results in the offspring inheriting one allele from each parent. Next, we have law number two, the law of dominance. The law of dominance states that when two different alleles of a gene are present in an individual, only one of the alleles, called the dominant allele, will be expressed, while the other allele, called the recessive allele, will not be expressed. The dominant allele masks the expression of the recessive allele. Finally, we have the third law, the law of independent assortment. This law states that the inheritance of one gene is not affected by the inheritance of another gene. Each gene is passed on to the offspring independently of other genes. Mendel's three laws help us understand the inheritance of traits in an organism and how traits are passed from one future generation to the next. They also provide a basis for predicting the likelihood of certain trait being expressed in an offspring based on these traits of the parents. While modern genetics has shown us that there are exceptions to these rules, the MCAT still wants you to know these and will test you on them. So make sure that these make sense. Now let's move into the three foundation. Next, let's talk about the three important. Next, let's talk about the three important genetics experiments you should be familiar with for the MCAT. We will start with Griffith. Griffith demonstrated Griffith demonstrated the ability of bacteria to be transformed by other bacteria. What he found was that if you kill a population of pathogenic bacteria that have a resistance gene, in this case, a smooth capsule, and mix it with a non-pathogenic strain, DNA from dead bacteria can be transferred into the non-pathogenic bacteria, making some of them pathogenic. This has modern day implications for the development of antibiotic resistance. So if we look at this diagram, we see that we take this rough strain, which does not have virulence or won't kill the mouse. So we see we, we inject the mouse, the mouse is happy, it lives. But if we have the smooth strain where it is virulent, you inject the mouse and it dies. What Griffith did was it used heat to kill the smooth strain. So when they kill the smooth strain and inject it, okay, we see the mouse lives because the virus was ineffective. However, if we heat kill it, heat kill the smooth strain and mix it with the rough strain, the thought is that genes are going to move from these lysed, killed, smooth strains into the alive heat strain, giving it some antibiotic resistance of sorts, allowing the mouse to be infected and die. Next, we have the avery McLeod mccarthy experiment. These researchers built upon the Griffith experiment and figured out that DNA was a class of molecules responsible for transforming bacteria. Don't need to worry about the details here. Just remember that they think it's DNA as the big molecule, but they're not sure yet. To figure out if it truly is DNA, we have the Hershey Chase experiment. While the previous Avery McLeod experiment found evidence for DNA as the molecule responsible for transforming bacteria, there was still a lot of debate in the 20th century. And the mainstream thought at the time was that protein was acting as genetic material. The Hershey Chase experiment used a bacteriophage to definitively answer this question by radio labeling its DNA and protein. The bacteriophage then infected cells and it was found that there was more radioactive DNA than protein. So therefore, the DNA was a genetic element and protein was not. What this looks like on our diagram here is we have this bacteria who had its protein radio labeled, which we'd see in red. Bacteriophages, as we know, infect bacteria and ultimately cause it to die. But in this case, we see there is very little radioactivity inside the cell, just outside the cell in the bacteria's protein. However, on the right hand of the diagram here, we see that we've radio labeled the DNA of the bacteriophage. Bacteriophage injects its radioactive DNA. We then take a Geiger counter essentially to the bacteria, and we can see that the bacteria themselves are emitting radiation. We know that 
it is DNA, not protein, that is the genetic material. Mendel's three laws and these initial experiments lead the foundation for modern genetics. This is very important, and the MCAT will expect you to know it, as well as recognize these names and what their contributions to the field were. Thank you so much for watching our video on genetics, and I will see you next time.